Jessica. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a fun pillowcase that looks professional and store-bought with cork fabric. So this project is really easy to make and it goes together fast. So I have my square of fabric and I just did a crease um, against the both sides. So I just folded it in half, I did a finger press, and then I folded it the opposite way so that way I could find my center. I'm going to take my ruler and mark a quarter of an inch away from that center line and I'm going to do that for the opposite side so that way this will help with positioning the petals on the front of the pillowcase. So do the same for the horizontal direction of the pillowcase. And what's really neat about cork fabric is that it comes from Portugal and it is a 100% sustainable material that is very easy to cut and sew with. So this material is really made out of cork fabric. It's a thin layer of cork with a fabric support backing and it's a woven material so that's what we're, you're used to sewing with. Um, so I have my pieces of cork already cut out that I need for the pillowcase and you won't want to use pins with the cork fabric because it will leave a permanent hole in the material. So whenever you're sewing it into a seam, you want to use some sewing clips, but in our case we're doing applique, so I'm just going to use a glue stick to position the petals. But you could also use uh, double-sided basting tape to help hold these in place when we're appliquing. So we have four large petals and then 12 of the smaller petals, and then you can add a center circle if you want. And you can get creative with how you lay these out on top of your pillow, but I am just gonna show you how I did it. So turn the cork fabric over so you have the wrong side up and apply some glue to the back. And position it so that way it hits that corner marking that we did on the front of the pillowcase. And it should try to get it so it's at a 90 degree angle in that corner and press it down. And there should, you can use your ruler to measure if there is equal spaces if you wanna get real technical about it. But this is just an easy project. It'll look cute no matter what way you do it. So I'll continue to add on the, the petals. And I'm just going to lay these out. I'm not going to um, glue them all down for now, just to show you an idea of how to lay them out. So I have the four large petals in the center. And to do the smaller petals, you will make sure that there is a quarter of an inch between the large petal and the smaller petal. And there is an inch and a quarter from the tip of the petal to that line that we marked earlier. And you can arrange these however you'd like, but this is just how I did it. And then I have some extra ones if you want to play and put them out farther, um, but I just put them in between and continued to go around. And you would of course glue these all down before you begin sewing. And if you'd like to add the center circle in the middle, you could just lay it over top of the cork fabric. Um, on my BL9 machine, I am able to sew through six layers of cork fabric, so you will not have a problem sewing through these two layers of cork fabric in the center here. So again, this is how I laid out my pillow, but you're welcome to get creative and lay your petals out like this, or like this, or even like this but I wouldn't recommend putting your petals like this. So the next step is to sew down the applique. And I wanted to show you my sample so you can see some different stitches that I used on the cork fabric. On the center of the petals, I used just a straight stitch. So if you wanted to stitch down all of your petals that way, you could. You're gonna have the raw edge, but you don't have to worry about that fraying at all because cork fabric doesn't fray. On the petals here, I did a zigzag with a narrower stitch length, so it's a little bit tighter. I would not recommend going less than 
one and a half millimeters for the stitch length because that will poke more holes in your cork fabric, which you don't want. So the less holes, the better. Um, on this other petal, I did a little bit wider of a stitch length, um, so any of these will work just fine. So if you've never appliqued before, or even if you have and you're new to the cork fabric, then I would recommend to test out some of the stitches on your machine and some feet that you have, different stitch lengths, so you can see what works best for your machine. And we're going to do that right now on a little sample that I have. I've glued down three extra petals that I cut so we can practice with the decorative stitches. I am going to be using the satin stitch foot to sew down the cork fabric. And what I like about using this foot with the cork is that it's clear so I can see the edge of my applique. And then also there is a plastic piece across the front which will help prevent the cork fabric from being drawn up with the needle as we sew. It will keep it flat. So that's what I like about the satin stitch foot. Another neat thing about this foot is there is a groove on the back side. So this will help feed those denser stitches and the denser material that we're sewing through. I'm going to go ahead and put this back on. And first I'm going to try the widest zigzag on my BL9 with a 2 millimeter stitch length. So I'm going to turn the hand wheel to make sure that my needle falls mostly onto the cork. And then when it comes back onto the right side, we'll want it to be just on the very outside edge of the applique. So that way we're covering the edge, but we're mostly on the cork to hold it in place. So it looks good and we're ready to sew. And I recommend that you start on one of the sides and not a corner of the petal, and that'll just help with a nicer stitch. When you get to one of the points, sew slowly, and if you'd like, you can turn the hand wheel, and you'll want so that the needle, the the right side of the needle lands on the tip of your cork fabric. Then we can pivot our foot and the first stitch will sew to the left so we'll be on our cork and we won't be off onto the fabric. backstitch at the beginning and the end if you'd like and make sure that your needle is in the highest position before we take it out from underneath and trim the threads. So to me this looks like it's a little bit too wide of a stitch for the cork. I really want to show it off so I'm going to narrow the stitch width by just turning this dial and you'll notice that the longer the dash mark, the wider the stitch. So this is getting even narrower and narrower as we turn the dial. So I'm just going to turn it a little bit, probably about in the middle. And then I'm going to shorten my stitch length a little and we'll test it on the next petal. So again, turn the hand wheel to make sure that the needle is lying on the cork and reposition if necessary. material is just gliding through my machine really nicely. So I kind of like how the second one turned out. I got a little off here, but this is just practice. So I'd recommend doing a couple more petals to make sure you know where to line up your foot so you can get the, the nice top stitching. But then I also want to show you um, the straight stitch. So I'm going to turn to a letter A. And where we're at with the stitch length, I'm going to turn it to probably two and a half. So it's a little bit longer 
and we don't have as much pin pokes with the, the needle. Okay, so start a little bit in from the corner. And make sure your needle is down when you get to the corner. And when you pivot, whatever seam allowance that you used here, try to stop that same amount before you reach the corner. You can continue test sewing on the different pedals to see what stitches you like and which feet works best for your machine, but that's how easy it is to applique cork. And you can do this on pillows, on other home decor, you can put applique on bags. It's very soft and not brittle, so if you'd like to try some out, check out my website. And I can't wait to see what you make with cork fabric. Thanks for watching.